Cleanup is one of the most important things you need to worry about when you're programming C. I know that on a lot of my videos, I skip cleanup and error checking. And the reason I do that is to keep the videos as short as possible. But on this video, I want to focus on cleanup and I'm going to also show you a cool tip that I like using for cleanup. I'm going to make a little demonstration here. I call it opener.c. And I'm basically going to open a lot of files. I'm going to start by including the relevant header file for the open function. I'm going to use the open system call. Let's open the man page for open system call. And I'm going to start my main function. First parameter for open is going to be the path name. Let's just call it ASDF. Now let's check out what I need to pass to the flags here. I'm just going to use read only, so just going to keep it simple. This function, as you can see here in the man page, if it's successful, it's going to return the new file descriptor that was allocated for the file that was open. File descriptor is basically a handle to the resource that is open. So if this succeeds, you need to somehow identify this resource. So when you call other functions like write afterwards or read, the operating system knows exactly the file that you're referencing. Now remember this because we're going to take a look at the file descriptors of this process as it's opening these files. And I'm going to make an artificial example here that will be really wasteful. I'm going to put this in a loop. And I'm going to add a sleep here as well. Let's just check out the man page of sleep. Notice I'm opening this with three and not with two. This is because sleep is a C library function. It's not a system call like open. So it has different category over here. This one comes from UniSCD. And the parameter here is seconds. So let's say I'm going to sleep five seconds, for example. Basically, I'm making a program here that just infinitely opens a file and sleeps. Notice that each time it's going to call open here, it's going to get a new handle for the file. Now I'm just going to go ahead and build this. For this, I'm going to use the make command, and I'm going to just pass in opener. This will automatically make the file that is called opener.c in my directory. Now if we take a look, we have an executable over here. Just before running, I'm going to create the file, asdf. Now I can go ahead and run this. I'm going to run opener, and I'm going to open another terminal here, and I'm going to run lsof. This is actually a program that you can easily get with your package manager. If you don't have it, just apt install lsof. I'm going to put information on the description about this. But in general, before I'm going to call lsof, I'm going to run ps-fe to get information about the processes that are running. Specifically, I'm going to search for opener. And this will give me the process ID of opener. So I can pass this into lsof minus p. So this will be the parameter that I pass in the process ID. Now I'm just going to make this full screen for a sec. And you can see here all the files that were open. You can see it's opening the same file over and over again. This is a file descriptor column. Each time it gets a new file descriptor. You see this is 3 and then it's 4, 5, 6 and so on. This is currently really wasteful. But we can use this program lsof to help us understand when we are writing applications if we're having any resource leaks. This is a resource leak because we're having here a resource that is open but it's not closed. To fix this, it's very simple. All I need to do is I'm just going to exit here for a sec. Let's stop this. All I need to do is just add after the sleep here. I'm going to add a close. Let's open the man page for close. This is also a system call. You see the only parameter that close gets is just the file descriptor. So I'm going to pass this over here. We need to save this also. And this will close the resource for us. So this will fix the leak that we saw before. Notice that it can get a little annoying to call close each time you need to close the resources. For example, you open another file. So I'm going to call this fd2. I'm just going to put this aside here on the left. Let's say I want to handle the case that fd2 has failed. I'm going to open the man page again for open. And I'm going to go to the section that talks about return. We can see that on error, minus one is return. So I'm going to handle this. As you can see here, I'm closing the file descriptor over here. But if everything is successful, it's not going to be closed. So I have to add another close on the outside over here. But wait, I need to also close the file descriptor too, right? 
So I'm going to add a close file descriptor too. And you can see that this quickly gets really messy. You need to close all kinds of resources in different lines. And it's hard to follow when to close which resource. This is getting long, so I'm just going to export this to a different function. I'm going to just copy this and call this, I don't know, open stuff. What I like to use is a pattern that is called go to cleanup. And all I need to do is just add a label here, cleanup. And here is going to happen all the cleanup that I need. Also, I like checking beforehand if I need to clean up. So I'm going to check if FD is minus one. If it's not minus one, then I'm going to call close. And same thing for the other one. Now I got all my cleanup code focused over here. And here, instead of calling close, I'm just going to call go to cleanup. And now imagine having this thing a lot more in your function. This will save you from copying the cleanup code over and over again, and it's going to make your code much more cleaner. I know that go to may seem confusing at the beginning, but this is basically the only good usage I find for the go to command, because it's always clear what exactly you want to do when you're using this pattern of go to cleanup. Now I know that it's a little funny that I only did the error checking over here and I didn't do anything on this open, but this is just for demonstration, so no worries about that. Also notice that it looks a little funny that I'm calling go to cleanup and right after that we have cleanup here. But imagine you have a lot of code over here. Let's say you have, I don't know, another open, let's say, ASDF3. And you don't want this open to happen if it failed opening the second one. So you can see how it's going to land here on go to cleanup, and then it's just going to skip over and go up to this code over here. Subscribe for more programming videos, and thanks for watching.